This is so relaxing. What's up guys, Dan Furlani here and welcome back to a new video. If you're new to the channel, there's just one thing you need to know. I make videos with and about the Canon 90D, the Canon EOS R, the Canon M50 and the Canon R6. This one, filming right now. Today, I just want to show you my settings, which are supposed to be the best settings to shoot in real time, the most cinematic way. Why did I say in real time? Real time is what you're seeing right now, not a slow motion. Let's get into it right away. The first thing you should do with your Canon R6, you should turn it on <laughs> and open the menu and choose your frame rate and resolution. And in this case, I'm going to select a 4K, 24 frames per second, which is not exactly 24 frames per second, but close enough. Why 24 frames per second? You know, that means that in one second, 24 frames are captured. And when they're played in a video, we get the impression, the illusion of the movement. Why not 30? Why not 60? Why not 12? Why 24 frames per second? Well, it's a standard of the movie industry because it's the minimum frame rate, the minimum number of frames per second that when we play it as a video, it looks natural. It looks like movement, the most natural way. You can do 30, you can do 50, you can do 60. It's okay, your choice. But the most cinematic frame rate, 24 frames per second. Let's move on. Picture style or picture profile. I do not use and I don't recommend using default picture styles, but rather C-Log or C-Log 3, which we do have in this awesome camera, the Canon R6. We go to the menu again, tab number three, C-Log settings, and we have many options, but for now we just click on the C-Log and we have C-Log 1 and C-Log 3. My advice, choose C-Log 3. Don't worry about the other options for now. And I already made some videos about it, but for now the important thing is that you choose C-Log 3. It gives us more flexibility, a higher dynamic range. Default picture styles just don't. Man, sorry, I'm gonna have to put these. So sunny here. Then we can go to live view mode. We exit the menu and we have to make a few adjustments. Uh, the first one is the shutter speed. The shutter opens and closes. And according to the rule, it should be set to double of the frame rate. So for example, in this case, we're filming at about uh, 24 frames per second. Therefore, it should be 48, but we don't have 48. So we set it to 50 or better, 1 50th of a second, close enough. <laughs> if we do less, everything will be blurred in the, in the movement. If we do more, the footage will be jittery. This way, we're gonna get the most natural blur in the movement. It's not gonna be too blurry, it's not gonna be too jittery. It's just gonna be natural or cinematic. Then, there are other things, very important things that we can adjust, is the aperture of the lens. So here it depends on the lens we're using. Like for example, now the maximum aperture of this 15 to uh, 16 to 35 millimeters is f 2.8. I set it to f 2.8. If you close it, like let's say f 4, f 8, f 12, the footage gets darker. Like you you close the aperture, so less light hitting the sensor, and the more you open it, the more light is gonna hit the sensor. So also let's say that if you, if you want a blurry background, you should consider a few factors and I made a video also about that. But for now, let's say you can achieve it through the aperture. The wider the aperture, the more you're gonna get the shallow depth of field. 
but it also depends on the distance between the subject and the camera and the background so the more the space behind the the, the subject the farther the the object in the background the more they're gonna be blurred so it's not really necessary to to use a, a lens with the maximum aperture of f1.2 or f1.4 to get a very nice shallow depth of field. In many cases, f2.8 is more than good enough. Sometimes even f4, it depends on the distance, again, of the subject to the camera and the background. And also, my advice, don't exaggerate, don't overdo it. I know what many of us think, and I know that maybe you're thinking the blurrier the background, the more cinematic it will look. Uh, it's not actually like that. I know, I know, I've been there, so I know what I'm talking about, and it, it's not always like that, because even in big movies, so movies, cinema, cinematic, right? Right. I think they're a maximum aperture, they usually f2.8. When you, when you see a movie or a TV show, and the background is always constantly, like, melted, like, so much, well, Usually they're, I, I mean, it just means they're, they're trying hard. So it's not necessary for you to, to shoot at an aperture of f1.4, f1.8, where there it's even difficult when you try to focus on a specific subject or maybe you need something else or someone else in focus which is a little bit farther or closer to the subject and the camera. So here it depends. But usually f2.8 works fine in most cases, unless you shoot it at night and there you're gonna need as much light as possible. When you shoot during the day, generally you do have enough light, very often more than enough and you're gonna need an ND filter, like sunglasses for your lens, so that you can keep the aperture open as much as possible. That depends on the strength, on the intensity of the ND filter without blowing out your footage. Another important thing, ISO, what is it? It's artificial light, <laughs> let's say. And it's like when you don't have enough light in the shot and you don't want to change the other settings or like you can't change the aperture because maybe it's already open wide and you don't want to change the shutter speed to get more light because it should be double the frame rate. Otherwise the movement will be different. I mean the blur in the movement. So that's when you can increase the ISO. But first thing we should know about the Canon R6 when we shoot in C-Log3 that the ISO doesn't stay 100. But rather, uh, if we use C-Log1, it should be ISO 400. But in this case, with C-Log3, it's ISO 800. So you might be thinking, mm, it's gonna look all grainy, digital noise. Uh, no, <laughs> ISO should be much higher than that, much higher than 800 to ruin our shot with the, with the Canon R6. Don't worry about it. So ISO 800 and Bob's your uncle. There are other things you should consider. If we need uh, digital stabilization, we can tap from the live view on the top right of the screen there and we have all possible options. We can select digital stabilization on or enhanced and we get some crop and some relevant crop when we set it to enhanced but I wouldn't use that it's supposed to stabilize like really well but it actually doesn't I mean first we get a huge crop and second it's not worth it everything is like wobbling and moving around when you use it not always but we have IBIS in the Canon R6, so sometimes we don't even need the digital stabilization, especially if we use the camera on a tripod like now. But if you want to shoot something handheld and you really want to make sure that it's gonna be stable, like not 100% but close, use a gimbal. Or activate the digital stabilization, the regular, not the enhanced. Okay, then we set the temperature here i usually set it to kelvin and i choose the temperature but then it depends on the environment i seldom set it to automatic because even when you use it in a studio where the light and the colors are, are, are not supposed to change but the temperature and the balance the white balance the balance of the colors may change every two seconds 
if you move closer to the camera or farther away or so it's not really 100% reliable so I set the Kelvin to usually between 46 and 4800 Kelvin and that works for me So I guess that's it. These are my settings for shooting in real time with the Canon R6 the most cinematic way. I gotta get going now. I gotta work. All right, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button right now and subscribe if you haven't already. And, and I'll see you guys in the next video.